Hello and welcome to Unit 4 of our Open SAP course Hire to Retire process in the Intelligent Enterprise. My name is Frank Bares and I'm part of the product management team at SAP SuccessFactors, focusing on building the Intelligent Enterprise at SAP SuccessFactors. Now, let's get started. You've seen in the previous unit what the Hire to Retire process is and what innovations went into the process recently. In this unit, we will see the planned innovations for the Hire to Retire process. So as a recap, as you can see here, um, the, the light gray parts are taken out of the Recruit to Retire process because they belong to other sub-processes. What you can see in, in dark uh, font here is the extract that belongs to the hire to retire sub process, process of recruit to retire. Let's start with cloud application lifecycle management. Cloud application lifecycle management will enable the administrators to monitor the, L, the line of business solutions centrally. Its capabilities of central monitoring, exception management and job management will allow to monitor, diagnose, correct and improve. So it's a central monitoring, um, diagnose, correction and improvement um, application that's part of the intelligent enterprise. Now, what does it mean? One of the key innovations as we have intensively worked with cloud application lifecycle management is integration monitoring. That's the first part that we tackle uh, in the second half of the 2020 release. So here we are using proven correlation methodology to provide you an end-to-end -end view of integrations. So as you can see here on the, on the screenshot, uh, we have recently enabled central monitoring for bank and legal entity integrations between SAP S4HANA and SAP SuccessFactors. And in the future, so as, as soon as in the upcoming second half 2020 release, uh, we are adding more integrations like the two master data integrations for workers and cost centers that you have seen in the previous unit. So those will be centrally monitored going forward in cloud application lifecycle monitoring. As a next highlight, let me come to the SAP Task Center. So a central inbox solution for handling all the, the approval um, applications across the modules, across the applications of the intelligent enterprise. So it's the clear goal to reduce uh, administrative burden, improve operational processes and provide better insight into the approval processes, the tasks and the notifications for our customers with expanded portfolios across the SAP suite and to provide um, a centralized solution for that purpose. So as you can see further down on the slide here, it, I'm talking about a kernel service um, for the SAP Task Center, where all the product applications of SAP provide their approval events to eventually. Um, <clears throat> It will also have mobile capabilities to, to perform the approval applications from the mobile devices. Uh, it includes the Fiori My Tasks desktop application as well. And lastly, it has integration of analytical and contextual data into that SAP Task Center as well. On that screen here, you already see a preview of what we um, have planned here in the upcoming release. So um, it is about approval events that are sent to the SAP Task Center um, from SAP S4HANA and SAP SuccessFactors. The starting points will be two approval tasks from SAP SuccessFactors. It's about the leave request approval and the timesheet approval. But as you can see here already, there is bigger plans 
for it. Um, in the end, we will have all the approval workflows, all the approval tasks um, fed into the SAP Task Center. Then I have brought with me an example uh, from the area of analytics. Um, the dashboard for the chief financial officer or to be more generic uh, for any kind of manager in the financial area. So um, as you can see on the on the picture on the left side of the slide, uh, it it retrieves data from all kind of sources like S4HANA, like success factors, but also others going forward. Uh, when it comes to a dashboard for the chief financial officer, um, we need pre-delivered quick time to value and flexible cross-application analytics solution to monitor and for him or her to act on the most critical business metrics um, across financial and human resources in particular. So um, making sure that all the data is available at the fingertip and that uh, the financial officer is then able to act on it, react on it, uh, depending on what is shown in the dashboard. So it's clearly an integrated solution that visualizes cross analytics, finance and human resource metrics um, um, and measures them effectively from top and bottom line impact. Just to name one of the differentiators here as well, um, it is a complete end-to-end self-service data management and analytics in the cloud. Then let me come to Employee Central. What is Employee Central contributing uh, to hire to retire going forward? So as you see here, what we have planned for the second half of the 2020 release uh, is the following. And here just to highlight a few. First of all, it's about Qualtrics integration. So basically being able to initiate a Qualtrics lifecycle survey using the intelligent uh, services of success factors. So basically measure the employee experiences at every moment that matters across the employee lifecycle. So it's near real-time events that are based on transactions and will be able to automatically trigger a survey in Qualtrics. So just to name a few here, uh, services could be triggered by using existing events already for, for example, a manager change, for adding a global assignment, for a new hire, and many more. That's not limited to just that one. Um, the second point here is um, from the area of localization, a country-specific gender field. Gender is becoming more and more country-specific going forward. There is countries in the world that still know only two genders, male and female. There is other countries um, that allow more gender values than just those two. And um, out of curiosity, uh, it varies across the countries. So we really needed a solution uh, that is country specific. So we added a country specific uh, gender field within the global information. Uh, we started also with predefined pick list values for Germany and India, but uh, values in general can be added by the customers as, as needed also for other countries. Then we come to the configurable new hire. You see the screenshot here on the right hand side. Um, configurable new hire is also wanted many times by our customers. Uh, it, it includes the ability to add, remove and reorder the blocks that guide you through the the new hire process. It supports the addition of custom content. And lastly, it's, it creates templates for supporting the different hiring processes. And lastly on the slide, it is the must changes on positions. 
This application or this enhancement is designed for HR, for managers and other non-technical users to easily apply mass changes to position data. So it supports easy uh, sorting, filtering, and to view the manipulation on large record sets. Lastly, it helps to execute changes across multiple selected positions in one transaction. Then coming to the area of time management, um, here we also continue our big investments uh, in, in that area, especially when it comes to integration with Employee Central Payroll. So the first one I wanted to mention here is the ability to buy leave. Um, that is a continuation of the previous release, the selling uh, of leave. Now we plan to add uh, the ability to buy leave. Uh, so essentially, it's a new uh, employee self-service scenario to buy leave. Then long wanted uh, by many customers, the cross midnight handling. Um, so the ability to record time for shifts that cross midnight. So and since this is very big, it, it will be um, a multi-release topic. So we are starting in the second half of 2020 with the absence recording and continue uh, with attendance recording, but also overtime calculation, premium calculations, etc. in the first half of 2021 and thereafter. Then we will provide an improved public holiday handling. Um, here, this is mostly about the um, payroll calculations for work on public holidays. So it's an integration topic with Employee Central Payroll. And the last topic here on the slide, the ability to handle concurrent absences. This is needed for compliance reasons. So in many countries, it's necessary to record multiple absences in parallel. And so it's really supporting the end-to-end -end process together with Employee Central Payroll for, um, just to give an example, the correct continued sick pay handling in the system. Then let me come to onboarding. Onboarding 2.0, as I said in the last unit, is a fairly new application. And our focus going forward in the next release, releases is on the redesign of the onboarding dashboard. So we simplify the user experience there um, <clears throat> and we, we work on providing an overview on statuses for all new hire activities, including data collection, compliance and onboarding tasks. And you see a screenshot of the onboarding dashboard on the right hand side. Also, in, as part of onboarding, um, we are working to react quickly on the to-dos from the new hire details. So you see the overview of all tasks here on that screenshot, and you see the buttons on the right-hand side where you can take action or, or nudge the participants. So all, all in all, that's about the, the onboarding dashboard where we focus on in the upcoming release. So I hope you enjoyed this unit as much as I enjoyed presenting it. So now let us recap what you have learned in this unit. So you learned about what the hire to retire sub process is in context of recruit to retire. And you learned about the planned innovations in all areas of hire to retire, like monitoring, like um, analytics, like employee central, like time management, like onboarding. So in the next unit, you will hear about the suite qualities and in particular, the one domain model. So for now, I wish you all the best on the final exams and I look forward to seeing you in the discussion forums. Thank you very much.